Good morning, viewers. It's a new day. Welcome to today's devotion with the Daily Fountain, the devotional guide of the Church of Nigeria Anglican Communion. Invite your family and friends. Get your Bible and your Daily Fountain manual while our devotional leader takes us on today's devotion. Greetings to you, my dear people of God. I welcome you to our Daily Fountain devotion for today, Tuesday, 11th February, 2020. Let us pray. Lord, the entrance of your word gives light and understanding to the simple. Make simple our hearts that we may receive that word which will remind us of why you have called us so that individually in, a, in wherever per status, positions and opportunity you have given us and placed us, who may use it for your glory and for your praise. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Our theme for consideration today is prisoners for Christ. Prisoners for Christ. Our text for meditation is taken from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. For this cause, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ for you Gentiles, if you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you all, how that by revelation... He made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby, when you read, you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ, to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church, the manifold wisdom of God, according to the eternal purpose, which he proposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. Wherefore, I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you, which is your glory. Amen. Prisoner for Christ was one of the common expressions used by the Apostle Paul for introducing himself in his letters. We have similar accounts in Philippians chapter 1, verse 1, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, and 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 8. Paul also used the same word, prisoner for Christ for his co-laborers and fellow servants, who he considered committed to the cause of the gospel. We have co-laborers like Andronicus and Junior in Romans chapter 16, verse 7, Aristarchus in Colossians chapter 4, verse 10, and Epaphras in Philippians chapter 1, Verse 23. The literal definition of the word prisoner does not apply to the use of the word prisoner 
in our text. The word prisoner literally means imprisonment of a person as a result of sin or offense or offenses committed. It suggests incarceration, restrain, depravity, or confinement of a person as a result of one's offense. On the other hand, in the context of our study today, the word prisoner as used suggests devotion, commitment, dedication, loyalty to a cause, especially in our context, to the cause of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Such devotion, commitment, that nothing would severe, no matter the cost. The Apostle Paul, therefore, he used this word to express his commitment and the devotion of other gospel partners to the cause of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verse 15, Paul said that the house of Stephanas showed addiction to the ministry of the saints. By the word addiction there, he meant to say that they showed unusual great interest to meeting the needs of the saints. Great interest, great commitment, great enthusiasm, devotion to meeting the needs of the saints. By implication, it means that we, as the children of God, we have been called to live a life of total devotion, dedication, commitment to the cause of the gospel of Christ. It means that God expects our undoubted commitment, our loyalty, our faithfulness to the assignment he has entrusted into our hands. The question that the Holy Spirit laid in my heart as I was preparing to come and have this devotion with us are, one, what cause are you, my listener, living for? How committed are you to God's assignment in your hands? What would be your Lord? What would be your stand? What would be your statement of result? Should God assess your loyalty? Should he evaluate your faithfulness to the trust he's committed into your hands? There was a king in the Bible in the Old Testament days. In 2 Chronicles chapter 25, when we start reading from verse 1. His name is King Amaziah. The Bible tells us that this king, he became king at the age of 25. He went for 29 years in Jerusalem. He did what was right in the sight of the Lord, but not with a perfect heart. That we have in that account, 2 Chronicles chapter 25, verses 1 and 2. By that, it means he sat for a whole 29 years. Yet his service to the Lord and to the people was not wholehearted. That means he served as like more or less like someone under compulsion. Wherein you can be sure there could be some, some sentiments or element of insincerity in his service. Perhaps hesitant at different point in time. But of a truth, God desire in our service to serve him faithfully. And that's the essence of the word prisoner, which means he's taken me over. The cause I believe, the gospel I believe, has occupied me. 
has possessed me. No wonder we we'll observe that the Lord Jesus Christ at the time when he was speaking to his followers said to them in Matthew's Gospel chapter 7 verses 21 to 23. He said, not everyone who said to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? And in your name drive out demons? And in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Away from me, you workers of iniquity. May this not be our portion on the last day in the name of Jesus Christ. It is crystal clear that Anyone who will serve as a prisoner of Christ must be someone whose heart has been circumcised. Without the circumcision of the heart, we cannot surrender our all to him. You remember many times you want to take decisions? Even though you have confessed the Lord Jesus Christ and professed to be a Christian, at times you just see yourself tell the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, allow me. I think I know what to do in this case. I don't need you to guide me. We may not have said it outrightly, but in our actions, we try to tell the Holy Spirit that I can guide myself, I can put myself through. I know exactly what to do. Our hearts need to be circumcised. The vision of God, His purpose, His assignment in our hands has to take over the whole of our being. There is a saying that says, a cause that is not worth dying for is not worth believing at all. If we acclaim ourselves to be Christians, sons and daughters of Christ, and we cannot allow his purpose, his assignment, the great commission, to take the whole of our being, then we need to reconsider if actually we have surrendered ourselves unto him. Hence, we need him to circumcise our hearts so that our wills, our ways could be submitted to his leading, to his guidance. And then we'll be able to yield ourselves to the mentoring and the direction of the Holy Spirit at all times. In Luke Gospel chapter 9 verse 23, the Lord Jesus Christ said, If anyone will follow me, let him first deny himself. Take up his cross daily and follow me. Deny himself. There must be that place of letting go of who we are, whom we choose to be, or we profess ourselves that we are, your position, your status. Some other things that made you see yourself as, oh, I have arrived. We must let go. Remember Paul. Paul was doing greatly for the Lord at the time. He was the best. You remember the record he gave us in Philippians chapter 10, chapter 3. He said he was a Pharisee as touching the law. He was blameless. Circumcised on the eighth day. But with all these achievements, he still said, oh, what I desire in verse 10 is that I may know him, the power of his resurrection, that I may associate in his suffering and participate in a death like his. As prisoners of Christ, we have been called to stand for Jesus. We may have things to suffer in the process. We may have to go through things like Paul equally went through things for the sake of the people of God he was ministering to in our text. They are the price that we need to pay for the gospel. So that when he shall appear, the Lord Jesus Christ will equally rejoice and be partaker of his glory. In conclusion, my dear people of God, God has placed you in that position of honor that you are occupying so that you will use it for his cause. You will use it to serve him faithfully. Fulfill his purpose for putting you there and bring glory to his name. 
you can't afford to fail him. You may be God's last hope. You may be the last man to be in that opposition. Perhaps God has been longing to have somebody in that position. Now he's giving you the chance. Perhaps you have even been the one praying, Lord, just allow me, just permit me. Now he's giving you the chance. Don't fail him. Don't take the grace of God in vain. We must therefore be careful. We must fulfill the purpose for which he has apprehended us as prisoners for Christ. Don't forget, not prisoner of Christ, no. He did not make us prisoners for, of himself, but prisoners for Christ, which means for the cause, the gospel, the commission that we believed. Let us therefore surrender our hearts to the Lord. Let's allow him to work in us, to work on us, and to make us fit and faithful for the assignments he's given to us. I pray that on the last day when it shall be revealed, with great joy, we will be ushered into his kingdom. We will not be full of regrets of having wasted opportunities that he's given us in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Give us grace, O Lord, to live faithfully to the cause for which you have positioned us and apprehended us so that we will not disappoint your expectation for my lives. Especially in a time like this, when the earnest expectation of the Creator awaited the manifestation of the sons of God. But that we may be found faithful, dependable, committed, loyal, and offer acceptable service for your glory and for the blessing of the whole world. In, for in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. God bless your day. Amen. We thank you for fellowshipping with us today. We invite you to join us tomorrow morning, same time, same station, for another special edition of The Daily Fountain. If you are led to sponsor or support this program, please contact the numbers and email all showing on your screen. 